Recording is on. So Jesse and I were just talking. There's been a bunch of things changing in plenty from some media things to uh, the way that uh, we create content. So I want to go through some of those updates so Jesse could take a look at those. And then I'm running into some bugs around managing props and state and things like that. So uh, I think Jesse might have some ideas that we can talk through there. So let's yeah. share my screen and take a look at some of this stuff. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see. Okay. See. All right, great. So this is just like a test plenty site. Now this is tracking with our static sites repo that we've talked about before, right? So it's um, yep. it, it pushes over here. Uh, right now I'm local, but um, I just want to be aware that that's where we're pushing to. Um, one thing that's changed here is uh, we're gathering blueprints now. So we have this blueprints.js file like this. Um, and this, this is basically, yeah, it's kind of mirroring, um, let me duplicate. It's kind of mirroring content JS, right? So we have content dot JS. Uh, whoops, I got to start up my server for this. And let's go back here. So it's content JS. Another thing you're going to notice, this is, these are being minified now. So um, you could come here and you could pass minify faults to it. I don't know if you can see that's kind of small, um, but it's a, a minify flag. You pass faults, and then you could actually unpack these things in ways that you could you can read them a little bit better. But essentially, what's happening here is you know all blueprints is being gathered the same way that all content is being gathered here, um, except instead of having the individual JSON files for the content, we're pulling the, the underscore blueprint files and we're building a similar object. So now this is something that I, I you know I debated about like we don't need most of this information, right? Like blueprints don't really need pagers and they don't need um, certain things in here, but uh, I'm thinking just to keep the API consistent. And in, in, if we're loading these um, pieces of content into the corresponding templates, so for instance, this will use the pages template. And then this, uh, I made another content type called test, and then I made one called yo. So if those content types like aren't checked, like if they're using a pager and they're not checking for it, uh, I just want to avoid error. So I figured keep the API consistent um, for now, and then you can load those into those templates without worry. Um, so that's kind of what I'm doing here. So I'm gathering those blueprints and then I'm using those basically to um, uh, allow a content adding uh, experience. So um, back over here in the website, let me just refresh this. Okay. So this is our about site. We're logged in. We have our admin bar um, and we have this add button at the top of the page. And so now this is actually starting to connect to something. So if I come here and it says um, add content of type. So basically it's going through our blueprint file and it's finding the different types. So there's, you know, uh, pages, test, and yo, and that's pulling those out as options that I can use to select um, adding a content type. Um, once I click on adding that, it'll give me um, a field here to add a file name because essentially what we decided is you really only need to specify the file name, right? Because we don't really know how the path will be configured on the back end. It's all, it could be pulled out of the file name. It could be pulled out of a key in the content. So we um, trying to define the path right here is a little preemptive, I think, because it, it's all going to tie into how the plenty.json site configuration file is actually um, determining how your routes are set up. So for here, you just add a file name so we can do something like, let's call it um, so file. Um, and then we set the file name. And then, oops, oh no. So this sometimes happens. I got to figure out what's going on there. Let me try that one more time. I'm going to reload this one more time. Uh, testo file, set file name. Okay. So now this is, um, pulling out, uh, basically this, since we chose pages, it's pulling out the pages default, um, uh, content and it's putting it into the, the pages svelte file. And it's giving us a, a basic, um, scaffolding here. So this is the, the test information. So it starts, you know, with some enter title here. This is placeholder description. It gives us that, um, we can say. This is the test file, and this is fine. We'll just put two here, and then I can publish this. This changes are committed, and if we come back here, reload. Okay, so you see it created content pages test file, and if we come in here, we can see content pages uh, test file. Um, so, so it's creating this. So this is basically um, kind of working from a full workflow standpoint um, from, from, you know, going from no content there to adding content there. There's a couple of um, points, uh, parts I want to talk about. So one is this magic uh, URL here, add pages. So 
this is something that if you were in another, um, uh, let me see if I can add another uh, browser here. So this will not be navigate. You can't navigate to this if you're not logged in, right? So this is a route that is, um, okay, that's not a good example because this that's a server redirect. Let me do it like this. Uh, let me oh, the router is like responsible to showing it. And yeah, exactly, exactly. So let me okay. yeah. let me just illustrate this real quick Edit as HTML. So if this href went to add pages, right? So instead of that, went to add pages. Oh no! Um, and where is the? We need oh, we need a where to go. Um, Oh, docs. Okay, so I'm not sure why it's not. Oh, oh, because it's it's got this these attributes. Hold on. This is a bad example. Um, but essentially, this should just 404 you. So let's get rid of this information. Add pages, docs. Okay, if we were to click this, ah, it, well, it's not going to do it because it's. Uh, <laughs> I, I'd have to. Um, uh, yeah. I'd have to reload that with without those that information, but that's okay. Essentially, you'll you get a 404 page because we're only allowing this to be routed um, if you are logged in. So you can take a look at the router here. Does it um, work if you're logged in and then goes directly to that? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, basically, um, uh, yeah. So what we do is we create a route for each blueprint type. So you know, add pages, add test, and add yo, and we allow those to be put there. And then if you go to those, we're, what we try to do is we're trying to load the corresponding layout for the type and we're trying to put in the default content in there so you can actually add those pages like that. Mm -hmm. um, if you were to server side, like you said, server side go there, it will not work. Um, it's only just like a client side route, right? Cause there's no HTML fallback for it. Um, so it's, we're really expecting that you're going to be going through kind of this workflow here, right? Like add and then go that way. Um, like you're saying, like if, if you were to just go to this, it's gonna be not found, right? Is that that's server side? Uh -huh. yeah. so it's only it's only a client side route. Um, then it could so yeah, be like, like a fragment route in, instead, like hashtag and some route. That way, it loads the index index HTML of the root root mm -hmm. for, then then like something like that the, yeah something like that yeah like parse the fragment. pages something like that yeah yeah you can do something like that i mean you could even probably do it like query string style um yeah it's usually like fragment because the fragments are not sent to server they're com completely local thing Mm, okay. That's good to know. Yeah, yeah. We could do something like that. And that way you could potentially reload the page and still have that um, working. That makes sense. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, we could even, um, you, I guess we could even create fallback for it. But yeah, that's probably the better way to do it. Do something like a fragment. That makes sense. Um, yeah. And so a couple of the problems that are happening is, so one is, um, okay, so we just created this new one, right? Um, I think I said... It's like RRR or something like that. Um, so let's publish this, right? So we publish this. If it wants to go. Okay. So that's published. Um, this is there. This is loaded there. But now if we want to do something like this, so um, uh, if we say, okay, you know, maybe we saved it, but now we're like, you know, continue editing. Mm -hmm. Um and then we save this again. So this is going to try to run a create and it's not going to be able to create the file, right? So cannot cannot commit the changes. Um, so basically one of the things I have on my to-do list here and I have a list of things so that I want to look at and also to do, um, there, we should be able to, instead of just like specifying, you know, create or add, we, like somehow we need to, up, to try to update the file if it exists and if not, create it if it's needed. So this is needed for this kind of editing workflow, but it's also needed for, Themes. So the way themes work is essentially, um, you know, you have like a site within a site. It's nested within a site, and then when we build them, we mush them all together. And anytime you have a, the same file in your project, it overrides the the file from the theme. 
Um, but essentially, uh, when they get mashed together, they're all going to look like the same site. But if you start editing one of the theme files that doesn't exist in your project, you know, you're not going to be able to update it, but you should create it. So it should look, if it can update it in your project, if it can't, then it should um, create it. So, so that's one thing that we're going to have to do at some point. So if the file exists, mm -hmm. check if it exists, then, then update, if not create. Um, so I think that would fix this as well. Mm -hmm. um, let's see, what else do we have? Um, okay, so then some other of uh, some of the other issues is um, basically adding uh, conditional content. Uh, so like, uh, sorry, additional content. So um, if we come here, like we have this um, being set right now, right? And if we try to add more content, first of all, our file name is not getting reset. Mm -hmm. And then if we were to, you know, if we were to add it, we come back here and this these blueprint um, props are still the old props. So instead of like going back and getting the initial this is a placeholder title. This is a, you know, enter title here. This is a placeholder description. We're getting the last updated ones here. Um, so you need to think through, through that, right? So even if we switch, you know, pages or whatever, and we come back and we add new, we're getting the old stuff that we had edited. Um, so we're gonna have to figure out how to, to reset that. Um, that's another issue there. Um, and, I was, let me show you where the, we're adding content here. So there's a couple of things about, first of all, this, this should be regex at some point. This valid, I just did that quickly because the regex was being a pain in the butt. Um, but essentially what we're doing here is when we're adding, um, we're, we're coming through and we're trying to, um, basically, you know, get the, the file name that we're, we're adding there. And then, um, we're trying to push to that route. So we're, um, pushing to the route that we created um, in the router. And then we're, you know, we're opening up the editor and then we're closing the pop-up. Um, and then at this point, since we're binding to content, I figured we could update that prop to change the blueprint file path here, but I was having trouble doing it because it was still loading the prop from the page that I was on initially, right? So if I started on about oh, yeah. and I did this, it was, it was trying to update the about prop and not my new prop. Mm. And so I was having trouble figuring that out. So basically what I did is I, I push up uh, <clears throat> this file name to the admin menu. Um, and, uh, and then I use that to pass this into our, um, our show. Where is it? Um, show visual editor. So I pass the blueprint file name to our visual editor. Um, and then our visual editor, I use that to set it. So we get blueprint file name. Let's see, blueprint. Whoops. Blue. All right, right here. Yeah. So basically, um, we're replacing the content file uh, path here um, if there was a blueprint file in it. So that's not, I mean, I feel like we could do that more easily just by changing that content prop in here, but I was having trouble with it. Yeah, it should be easier, but as you said, it needs some copying. Yeah. Objects are references. And if you use the object from the blueprint, you're editing actually the blueprint and not the, <laughs> mm -hmm. not the page. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. Is that something that like, do you feel like you have a good handle on how that could be fixed? Yeah. Is, yeah. That, that sounds like uh, quite like a straightforward fix. Okay. Great. Cause it's, it's been throwing me for a loop. So I, I cause I, I know we talked last time and it seemed like something pretty straightforward for you. I've tried a couple different things like, um, I was trying to create them as separate objects instead of the reference, but I was having trouble doing it. So I think that would be awesome at some point if you have a chance to, to look at that to basically, um, I think we could pull all, like, I don't think we even have to pass this file path up to that component. I feel like we could do that right here by changing the, this content object, which is already um, being bound here. So this should, you know, uh, we're, we're binding this uh, in our uh, admin menu. Um, so when we look at the... Yeah, we're, we're so this should be able to be updated, I would think. But so I don't know. That might be something to do with the router that's giving some trouble. Um, but maybe fixing that there, and then also like uh, 
like I was talking about, like resetting this file name when we go back to when we're when we're back at this stage. So we probably, you know, we probably want to um, leave it at this point. But as soon as you click into one of these types, then we probably want to reset the file name, right? Yeah. Um, have this have this go back to blank, and then also once we, you know, put a new thing in there, we also want to reset our blueprint props to be the default set start here. So those things, um, those are probably the big things that that need to be done to make this workflow better. Um, I'm also, you know, we, I'm sure we could do things with fragments as well to to make this um, allow some server loading um, and make that experience a little better too. Um, that could be cool. Um, and then, yeah, I, I think once we get to that point, we're like, you know, we have a almost like the full workflow of that kind of working and it, it would make sense. Um, obviously nice to have would be also to think of like the, the updating if file exists and creating if not. But I think the for me, the highest priority would be making sure that, you know, you can add a new page from here, like, like this without it, you know, messing up. Uh, yeah. That would be kind of like the next big thing. Um, Let's see some other things I've been thinking. Sorry, do you want? Is there more you want to talk about on this? I know it's a lot. Um, yeah, I, I just made a no, notes about those, and it's okay. It, I'm on the map. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, can I show a couple other things real quick, and then all right, cool. Um, so yeah, there's a bunch of other things just just going on. So I just want to go through um, my thought process on some of this stuff. So uh, let me just show real quickly um, some media things. Uh, so. So we have our media library. I, I changed this stuff around a fair amount. So there's some bugs now. So now like our assets, folder. I just changed some of the paths and stuff. So assets folder is, is showing up here now. I haven't fixed that yet. Um, mm -hmm. But I think you'd seen it since you can select and you can download and you can delete selected media. Um, mm -hmm. I think you've seen it since if you, um, for instance, if you delete selected media, like this picture here, um, and I delete this, it removes it from the display immediately. Um, and yeah. that persists. I think we've seen that. Um, I'm actually not sure if that, went through okay, it did so so that went through there um let me go and pull these changes just because we're going to get out of sync pretty fast here um pull that in we'll run this again and let's come back here and reload this okay the media but now the, the change here is that we also persist this way so if we come here and let's um Let's grab dark menus and errors, right? Yeah. Um, so these are here. And then if I save the media, so it'll disappear and we'll get it over here. So now our dark menu and our errors are here. Um, and if I were to grab one of these, I can even download it. So I can download this. You know, it's going to give me a weird file name because it doesn't really know the file name, but I can download that and I can click it and get some errors that we have. So, so that's kind of workflows. Obviously, um, you know, these, until the, the site builds and you refresh, it's not truly there. We're just doing it all with magic props, but I think the experience there feels like a, a fast live experience. So hopefully that's, you know, better for folks once they're, they're playing with this stuff and trying to manipulate it. Um, so that's an improvement there. Mm. Um, another thing that I've been thinking about is um, just kind of like where we're going with some of this stuff. So <clears throat> I think, uh, you know, I got to fix the bug fix with the assets and showing up in the media folder. That's, that's, that's this, you know, this, um, yep. well, I got to uh, fix the, the URL matching for that. Um, uh, basically the thing we talked about there and then WYSIWYG. So WYSIWYG is fine. You know, it's not, well, it's not great first of all, but like, um, you know, it's fine in a site like this, right. But as soon as you get a site that is not doing, uh, HTML loading there, um, you know, right now the, everything is being based on the, the content source, which is a nice easy way to think about this, but it falls flat in certain ways, right? So in here, we're, we're kind of thinking um, long text and short text fields based on how long the content is in, in these sections. Like a short one becomes like a, a plain text short field and these ones become longer text WYSIWYG fields. Um, I think maybe we should make everything just kind of like a, a regular kind of like text field, but then add in WYSIWYGs only in the case where this is being rendered out as HTML. Now I'm not sure how to do that, right? Because it's silly to do, like for instance, let's um here, let's do an example here. I'll make this a long text field, right? So this is now a WYSIWYG field. But mm -hmm. if I do stuff like this and I bold it, uh, it's going to print the actual HTML tag, right? So there, so there should be no case where we're giving um, WYSIWYG features to a, a plain text rendering, right? It just doesn't make any sense. Um, especially it gets really messy as you start adding more stuff in here, right? Like 
Um, so it would be great at some point, and this is not highest priority, but this is on my mind. It'd be great if the WYSIWYG like no is aware, context aware, whether it is being rendered with HTML or not. And then we'll add, we'll, whenever it's being rendered with HTML, we'll always add the WYSIWYG. And when it's not, we'll never add it. And that will be the determining factor rather than content length. Um, about so when we also like a discoverable feature, not like everything else. Yeah, it'd be discoverable. The yeah. the challenge that makes it harder is it's being discovered from the template versus yeah. the content source. So I think that adds some complexity. I think that's the first feature that we're doing that way. But um, obviously, I think that ultimately is you know once we get to like on page editing and this kind of like you know be able to edit directly and do stuff here, I think it's all going to be coming from kind of how it's used in the template. So it might be a good first step into that that world. But um, yeah, we're not really doing that yet. So I'm, I'm, I'm not really exactly sure about what the best process for doing that would be. But if you can get your wheel start thinking about it, you know, um, in your free time, then, <laughs> then, yeah. that, then we can think through that. But um, not, not the most urgent priority for now. I think this other stuff is higher priority. Yeah. Um, the other thing thinking about, you know, we talked about this a lot, the local CMS workflow. So I think having to avoid coming here and then like doing get polls every time and um, being able to work locally would be great. Um, I also think this will be a big selling feature for people who don't really know what this project is about and what we're doing. So what they're going to do is they're going to be like, oh, I heard there's a CMS in Plenty and they'll start it up. And then the, the setup is intensive enough where it might be confusing for some folks, um, even though it's, I think it's pretty easy to connect to, to get in everything and create an OAuth app. But I think there's going to be a lot of folks who are going to just want to look at this for the first time and they're going to want to spend no more than five minutes on it. And it'd be great if they could get up and running by just like clicking login and then like do some local edits and it saves locally and then they can kind of understand the full picture from there. And then they'd be like, oh, how could I, you know, how could I host this or how could I put this on a server or whatever? And then they can start thinking through the GitLab um, workflow. So I think this will be a big selling point for just getting the local workflow so people can see the CMS in action without doing a lot of, um, a lot of, uh, you know, setup. So again, that's something at some point I think will be important. And then, uh, image replace when editing content. So that's kind of like, you know, over here when you're editing content, there should be some kind of uh, image field that we can use to replace the existing image. I know we talked about that. Um, and then a, a part of that would be like image cropping, scaling and optimizing. So like when you're over here, like, okay, you know, you have uh, an image on the right here and you're replacing it. So you're replacing it. It's like, do you want your newly uploaded image to have the same dimensions? Do you want to turn it into a, a web piece so it loads faster on um, that kind of stuff? So thinking through that at some point. Uh, Again, I think some of the this other bug fixes will be higher priority, honestly, just to get that workflow working would be great. But um, again, I know you're thinking about this stuff as well. Yeah, I, I was like working on them a little bit, but oh, nice. I wasn't like making good enough progress that I, I would be like so committed to them. To the yeah. Fixes. So I can switch to the bug fixes. That would be that would be great if you don't mind doing that. And then, yeah, I mean. If you're, you know, if, as long as you're not hitting any like, you know, complete stone walls with this other stuff, yeah. like if you get a chance to even do that uh, after, then that's great too. Um, I, you have the green light for me to to move on any of these things. Um, I just want to communicate priority because I think this stuff up here is like needs to get fixed first. Um, great. And then the last thing that's kind of on my mind is like, okay, so I, I think, you know, we talked about like schema for these fields. So you can like, as a, a developer, you can override how these things are. So they're not only being discovered. So you can start as a base from the discoverability, but then you might want to specify things. Um, so, you know, required fields, select lists, all those type of things are probably important. Um, I think the most important for me is defining a list of components. So um, this site's not a great example of this, but I have, I'm working on some other sites that are heavily component-based. So basically the whole site is set up in these components. And mm -hmm. then inside these components, there's nested structured fields. Like for instance, like this source might be nested within a component and so might another like text field, right? Um, so being able to define a list of the components that would be added here so you can build like a completely component-based site um, might might be something that's interesting to do. So um, that's that's something I'm thinking about. Again, don't don't worry necessarily about that yourself right now, but I just want to communicate to the world what we're thinking about and what we're working on. And uh, I think something like this will be coming uh, in the near future to make this a little more powerful. Um, so basically you could come over here and like in the if this was called a components field inside of the description or something like that, you could say add new components and you could add new um, defined blocks of these that are structured. Yeah. So, Cause right now we can remove them like this, but we can't add them. So we need a way to add them. Yeah. I, that's, that's a lot, Jesse. I mean, does that, does that all make sense? I'll, I'll yeah, uh, stop sense. my screen share. Yeah. yeah. Cool. 
So yeah, I think um, I think we're clear on priorities. If you get time to work on the stuff, I think getting those bugs fixed would be great. Uh, you seem to, <laughs> to be able to do the, the tough technical challenges a lot faster than I can. So that's great if you um, if you have a good understanding of that. Um, yeah. And I I can keep a. Uh, I can keep doing a rough scaffolding of some of these new features. I think, you know, mm -hmm. in order to get kind of like the vision out there, I, I don't know if that's helpful. Hopefully I'm not creating more work for you, but it might be, you know, helpful to get some of these rough scaffolds in place. And then uh, I bring in the big guns to help me actually <laughs> fix the, the broken yeah. stuff. So it might be helpful, helpful to you know, like make the idea more clear and so mm -hmm. on and actually create something. Yeah. And it, it doesn't make like different if, if we like, redo it yeah 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 we can always rewrite stuff yeah i mean we did that with the assets right like we the media gallery was like doing a fetch and we, we completely rewrote or you completely re rewrote that which is great um so yeah no that makes sense um but it gives us some scaffolding work off so i, I can keep uh ticking away at some of these other big features if you uh if you can come up and clean up some of the mess behind i think that's great <laughs> that would be like a good arrangement <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I know you're super busy, so hopefully that will help. Um, yeah, anything else you want to say on camera, or should I? Um, um, off no, nothing more. <laughs> okay, cool.